Let's get into the Mike Babcock stuff. This comes from Jack Brownlee. Hey, Mike, wanted to get your thoughts on the Babcock situation. Their organization and PR shot it down, but now the NHLPA is saying some guys were uncomfortable with Babcock. Do you think he'll get fired? So yeah, this this obviously has been the story of the week on, uh, what was it, Tuesday or Wednesday? Spin and Chicklets released this clip, basically going in depth on Mike Babcock, allegedly asking various Blue Jackets players to see their phones, then airplaying their photos on his office TV. Obviously, a pretty serious claim. So that's, a, that's a pretty big invasion of privacy. And Spin and Chicklets really held their ground and said, yeah, we had multiple players come tell us this, both current Blue Jacket players as well as former Leafs and Red Wings players being like Babcock's doing his old stuff. So when you look at this situation, obviously the Columbus Blue Jackets immediately denied it. There was this whole PR statement meeting with our players. I asked them to share their phones. All fam- this is from Babcock, family pictures as a part of the process to get them know better, which seems pretty standard. Then Boone Jenner said that Babcock basically asked them about his family and wanted to see pictures of his family. So from the Blue Jackets perspective, PR perspective, they they released a statement. And I think with Boone Jenner, my personal two cents is I think with some of the older guys, he probably did just want to get to know their family because he's not going to go after Boone Jenner when he's on the job for two months. So I do think there is some validity to this PR statement. But again, I just have a hard time thinking that Spitting Chicklets would make this up out of nowhere, and especially when you consider the history of a guy like Mike Babcock. So like most things, I don't think Babcock maybe did it to the extent that Paul Bissonnette was saying, but I don't, I'm not ready to exonerate Babcock as a whole, given his reputation. And Biz really didn't back down. Biz tweeted out to this PR statement. He said, tell Babs to knock off the bull. I'm not going to curse on YouTube. Enough with putting guys on the spot in the coaching room, asking them to link their phones up to airplay mode and grilling them. I've had a ton of players confirm it. Smarten the uh, up, Babs. Shove your statement up his arse. So yeah, they're not backing down. And and, and if I'm Paul Bissonnette and I'm getting these sources from these players, I wouldn't back down either because Smitchuk has got a lot of hate for this. And if you're going to do such a bold claim, you better have legit sources or else rightfully so you're going to get called out on your bullshit. So it looks like they're not backing down right now. And now the NHL is really looking into it. Obviously, the Players it's players Association, we're going to look into this. But now there's kind of some legitimacy to the claim that recently came out. This was from last night from Elliot Friedman. Uh, Marty Walsh and the players, uh, player executive director, Ron Hainsey, legendary player, uh, had a meeting with the Blue Jackets. It was described as intense at following the story from Paul Bissonnette. They were satisfied with the explanations from Boone Jenner and Johnny Goudreau. However, it appears that things changed for the for both later that night when information was received that some of the younger Blue Jackets players were uncomfortable with what had happened. That appears to be the major focus of the investigation. And then it just goes on to say that they're cooperating. They have their uh, prospect horny this weekend. And at the bottom... Babcock has done similar stuff, whether it be in Detroit or Toronto. So that, that that's kind of what I always thought. I, I never really thought that he was grilling Boone Jenner, the captain that's been there for 10 years. But when you look at what he did in Toronto, what he did in Detroit, it makes sense that a, that a coach in that po- position of power would go after some of the young guys and try to like basically bully them, instill in them that I'm the guy you got to like smarten up. You got to, you, you operate under me. I am your superior. It's not a collaboration. I am the Supreme leader. So when looking at this, maybe you look at some of their young guys, were, were they grilled by Mike Babcock? I think it's perfectly reasonable, especially when you look at a situation with his, with him in Toronto, Mike Babcock, the Mitch Marner situation, this, this this does not help Babcock's case when you realize that Marner in his rookie year was asked to list out who he, think, he, who he thought the laziest players on the Toronto Maple Leafs were that season. And wait, let me, let me just pull this up. Uh, he was asked on a father's trip, he was asked to list the laziest players on the Toronto Maple Leafs from an effort level. He put himself last, which you kind of got to respect. But when he showed Babcock the list, Babcock then went to Nazem Kadri and Tyler Bozak, who were also like apparently kind of low on the list, and showed them 
So his like rookie hazing, Babcock, literally just went to players and basically said, Marner called you lazy. Even though Marner didn't want to do that goddamn exercise, he did it again. Babcock made him do it. Obviously, he was going to put himself last, and he had to put some people at the bottom. So you look at Babcock. He has this tyrannical, borderline abusive history in his past with some of these young guys. So I do think it is possible that you look at an Adam Fantilli, you look at a Kent Johnson, a Krill Marchenko, I wouldn't be surprised if Bob Babcock pulled one of these things. I'm not saying that he did it, but that does kind of fit in with his narrative that maybe he tried to exert his will and kind of show dominance over these guys by being like, let me see your goddamn phone. Like, no funny business anymore. This is unacceptable or stuff like that. So I think it's perfectly reasonable. And just another Babcock incident that I want to bring up is Johan Franzen literally said that Mike Babcock was the worst person he had ever met. Johan Franzen obviously played for the Red Wings for basically his entire career from like 2005 to like 2013, 2014. And this is a quote from Franzen. He described Babcock as a great coach, but he was the terrible, the worst person he's ever met. He's a bully who attacks people. It was couldn't be cleaner. Wait, um, it couldn't be clearer at the arena or in Detroit or anyone else. He would lay into people without any reason. And according to Chris Chelios, Babcock once blatantly verbally assaulted Franzen during the game on, a, on the bench, and it got to the point well, where Johan, without, without anybody knowing that he was already suffering from a concussion and depression, broke down and had a nervous breakdown on the bench and after the game in the dressing room. So you look at Mike Babcock. He is a guy that absolutely rides players, doesn't care about like societal norms, mental health, all that stuff. So you have this guy and now you have the players association coming out and saying, yeah, some of the players were pretty uncomfortable with what he did. I think I'm probably going to more so believe that the young players might have been, I mean, maybe it wasn't like a straight through the phone, but that did Babcock probably grill them intentionally and said, yo, show me your phone. Let me see some of these pictures. I don't think that he was going to like, throw anybody off the team over it, but it definitely was something that made them uncomfortable. So in the coming days, we're going to have to see how this goes. And in today's NHL, a more player-driven league, you can't do this kind of crap, especially if you're Babcock. This isn't 2009 Babcock coming off of Stanley Cup. He doesn't have that pedigree. He's, and he's on his fourth job now and after being out of the league for three years i don't know why he thought if this is the case why he thought that he could pull this stuff but it seems like maybe he hasn't learned i i honestly i mean like i hope i hope this is still not true just because i don't want the players to go through this but right now I, I would lean towards something did happen between Babcock and maybe some of the younger players, but we're going to have to find out. We're going to have to find out. We got to let the NHLPA do their full investigation, and I'm really looking forward to it. As to, I think the question asked, do I think he's going to get fired? If it does, if it does come out and one player says, yeah, he took my phone, he went through my pictures, and then he grilled me. I think, I think given the history, I think he might have to be fired. It'll be a disaster because Columbus brought this guy in I don't know why they knew that they knew that this might have happened. This might, this would probably happen. So, but I think there's so much public pressure. This story has not really died down since Tuesday or Wednesday, whenever it dropped. So I think if we actually get some serious findings in this, if there's a guy willing to speak up, I wouldn't be surprised if Babcock is fired with it by, by the end of next week. It wouldn't be that surprising.